if we're a laughing stock, <laughs> is this man going to get this job? No. First of all, he's not even qualified. <laughs> what do you mean? If there's anyone who is qualified, it's Baba. No, no. Have you checked the qualifications to be the chairperson of the African Union Commission? Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed. So there's a gentleman here who's always outspoken, who never, never shies to speaking his mind. As it is. He calls it like it is. Yeah, man. He may not always be right. Yeah, man. He may have sold his party. Uh huh. (laughs) At And he's very bitter, by the way. He's pissed off. Yeah, he says you never. At the kwa show. Yako. Akasema party yake imeuzwa. Uh huh. Akasema never. Joining us live in the studio. Dr. Ekuru Alcott. He is the team leader of uh, Third Way Alliance. Alliance. Former presidential candidate. Well, that yeah. you know, nobody remembers. <laughs> <laughs> His ambitions and aspirations does, in the end. Does happened. anybody remember Ekuru Alcott ran for president? By the, by the way, if you, if you honestly even just followed the events um, in 20, 20, 2017, mm. it was Third Way Alliance Kenya Kill that saved this country from violence. Oh, come on, man. Come you, on. You, know, you give yourself you know, too much you know, credit. You know, you know, Jeff, the problem with some of you media people mm-hmm. is that uh, you don't actually do research. You don't read. Oh. Because if you had read the, the Supreme Court judgment. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah? yeah, the one you filed. Yes. The one you I filed. Su- I supported. Uh-huh. I supported Ray Long. Yes. Uh-huh. And that is the, the, the judgment that actually nullified the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Right. Now, in that, in that judgment... Justice Maraga, reading the verdict, said because of irregularities and illegalities in the submission of results, we are nullifying this election and therefore the country must go back to a fresh election and Article 140 sub Article 3. Do you know where he picked the word irregularities and illegalities? Mm. From an audit report that was done by Third Way Alliance. But listen... Goja, Goja... You're giving yourself so much credit. What, what do you mean? I mean, I'm just giving you facts. So, 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 judgment. so, so they quoted Third Way Alliance? They quoted an audit report from Third Way Alliance Kenya. That Which said what? Irregularities. There were irregularities and illegalities in the submission of results. I can share the report with you if you want. But you can also read the judgment. And those are the words of uh, uh, Justice Maraga Emeritus. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. So why did they swear Raila in in Uhuru Park as the people's president if he knew was, he couldn't beat Uhuru? If you look at Article 3, sub Article, I think Article 3 of the Constitution of Kenya, sub Article 2 or 3, you cannot form a government other than the way the Constitution requires. Mm. So that was an illegality. And that was one of the failings, in my view, of the Jubilee administration. It was treasonable yeah. uh, to purport to be an, uh, another president. When there is already a president who was declared, elected, and confirmed by the Supreme Court mm-hmm. of Kenya. So that swearing in was an illegality. It should have been, Raila should, have, should be in jail, if you ask me. For committing treason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, fast forward. So, uh, but, Jeff, fast but forward. Jeff, before I forget, yes. eh, you know, I, I, you know, I have a beef with you. What, what's your beef now? I mean, Evidently, what's your beef? You invited some nondescript fellow here called Jeremiah Kioni. Guy. Yes, and who made very false allegations amongst them that I sold my party, Third Way Alliance Kenya. Correct. You are bought. At that I was bought. Yes. I want to confirm to you, a Kuru Aukot is priceless. Nobody can buy me, and I never sold my party. And you refuse to give me the right of reply. So you go up a little. No, Lakini Sasa is too late in the day because now, where is Jeremiah Kion? In fact, I want to invite him here eh, to chop a debate in there. I, up, I up. want to look him in the eye and tell him, <laughs> okay, tell me, when did I say, and how much? Did I sell my party? And to whom? Yeah, to who? <laughs> so, so you haven't sold your party? To who? Chama Iko Imara. By the way, Third Way Alliance Kenya is the only consistent party by the in the history of Kenya. Oh, come I, on. Man. Listen. No, 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 he's no, giving no, himself Roger, more credit. Roger, uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so let, for example, let me, let me give you an example. Okay. Eh? Yeah? Tell me any leader in Kenya today who has not changed parties in the last, maybe, for example, 10, 20 years. 
coalitions every election. Maybe, maybe Kanu. Kanu, Kanu. Kanu actually can come closer to. Okay. Yeah. If you look at President William Ruto, for example, what is he? He's like a chameleon. So, I'm going to talk about Kanu. I'm going to talk about ODM. Uh, URP, um, Jubilee, Jubilee, TNA, TNA, TNA mm -hmm. Nini, is all of them. Mention any any leader today nationally can say so, and compare them with the Kuro Court. You've always been third way, Kabisa, and I formed the party myself, mm. and I've remained uh, a life member of Third Way Alliance. I've never mm -hmm. changed. What's but, your What's your membership plus minus? Uh, over fifty k, I think. Oh, yeah, I think we're doing here. Yeah. Not bad. But oh, you not were bad. almost registered the other day. No, they, they claimed, but you see, we challenged her to give us evidence that we have lost membership. Our register is very clear. We are over 50 members, mm. 50K. Thousand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, and you see, the, the Political Parties Act requires of you to only have, uh, um, what, a thousand members in a majority of counties, which is uh, 24, 24 counties. So basically, you need twenty-four thousand. So, but for us, we 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 have surpassed that. So the only reason we are being threatened with deregistration yeah. is because the political class and system today in Kenya is trying to eliminate any competition. And and by the way, Jeff, again, you will say maybe I'm praising myself so much. Eh? <laughs> I want you to go back to our manifesto of 2017. Mm -hmm. We actually rated the best manifesto. And by the way, if you go to the Congress uh, website, only Third Way Alliance Kenya website is actually listed as a source of information. Because there was an audit about which manifesto is actually transformative. Mm -hmm. Like today, I mean, people are talking about free education. We offered that in 2017, up to tertiary level, to university level. You know, um, People are talking about uh, ending theft of public money. Mm. I mean, it was in our manifesto in 2017. I, I, I honestly hope that, you know, at the risk of sounding a bit uh, harsh on Kenyans, I think we are too slow learners. Yeah, yeah we Texas, never learn from our yeah. political mistakes. It takes exactly. us a while. Yeah, it takes us a while. Because, so, so, because if you read exactly what we had proposed as a party, Everybody's talking about it right now. I can see some fellows that he pretending that Suji they are bringing back Pungu, that he, they want to Punguza Mizigo. Isn't that what we did five years ago? That I remember. That I remember. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> well, are you happy? Are you but, happy in the direction in your, our country is headed right now? Especially with mm -hmm. a broad-based government. Your design. So your yeah. thoughts. Absolutely not. Because you see, it's a compromise on the whole governance uh, system in Kenya. You see, one of the geniuses, I will say, of Jubilee administration and now by extension Kenya Kwanzaa is that you have to compromise the loudest uh, noise maker out mm. there. So you bring him on board. That's what Uru did in 2018 with the handshake when he brought in Raila Molo Odinga. Ruto has done the same thing today because he knows for me to go back into slumberland and not to fulfill the political promises I gave Kenyans in 2022. Who else out there can actually disrupt me? Who has a political constituency mm. Yeah, mm. that can actually say, like you see, Mandamon has died because partly the, 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 the Raila wing you know, uh, is now happy that they're in government. I don't know whether you follow the events of the last four days in Luo Nyanza. Yes, of course. And, and you can see the psychophancy. <laughs> yeah? It's ridiculous. Yeah? I think the you know, stone throwing has become a... It's very, the past. it's yeah, very exactly. laughable. So, so, so the way the country is going, honestly, it's not good because Jeff and I think uh, in Guza, you guys need to pull out some of the speeches made by Asan Joho or Pio and But Bai, we have been playing John, them, John Badi, Doctor. We have know? been playing them. Yeah, when they were speaking against Ruto. So now, very vocally. So now, what I think we need to uh, to, to talk about as a, can, as a as a as a country is what is really the soul of our nation. What is the conscience of this country? Do we have a conscience as a people? Why would somebody call you Mwizi, I will never work with you, SG, ni, 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 ni. and then all of a sudden, I mean, government, all praises. Hmm. We are a pretentious society. We're uh, fake. We are fake. We are completely, we, f we are fraud. We are a fraud, fraudulent society. So, I, you know, I don't like the way the, the, way, the, way the country is going because we have compromised opposition. Because the idea of opposition is not necessarily violence. 
but it's about also checking on the excesses of the government. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, for example, when the finance bill fell, yeah, and Ruto said that I'm not gonna, uh, you know, uh, I'm rejecting this finance bill in totality, but he went ahead and signed an appropriation law. Yeah. Yeah. Now, an appropriation law is an expenditure law, as opposed to a money collecting law, which is the finance law itself. Uh -huh. So. How is he spending the money? Where is this money being collected from? Because the finance law has a, a life a lifespan. 30th of June every year, mm -hmm. that law must lapse. Okay? So he has taken us back to 20... I know the law, the high court passed, say that you have to go back to the previous law. But in terms of real, uh, you know, collect, revenue collection, so he has taken us back. So... I don't like the, way, where the direction the country is taking because we don't have a leadership, to be honest with you. But like I said, I think the best thing that ever happened to this country in terms of really transitioning is that President William Ruto became president. Why do you say that? I say that because for a long time we've been treated to some sort of dynastic leadership in this country. Yeah? Mm. And I think to William Ruto's credit... Yeah, I think he ended that those fake dynastic claims. Yeah, but now there is a political opportunity for Kenyans to now look him in the eye and say, "Okay, you say that you are one of our own, bottom up, wheelbarrow, mutum mutum kokoteni, and all that." But you are doing the opposite. You are actually punishing Mama Mboga. You claim that you used to sell suji chicken, suji and eggs. And by the way, you know when when you're a chicken chicken uh, uh, seller. You're actually an investor. It means you have got a business idea. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing at you know, uh, wrong about that. But now we have given you the position to lead us, to transform this country, to be one of our own, to go back and say, Mimi, Mimi I can relate to Mama Mboga, Mutua Mkokoteni, the wheelbarrow guy, and all those kind of things. But you're doing the opposite. Jeff, and I will say this, and I hope, uh, you know, I'm not making any, uh, you know, we are a laughing stock in the continent and globally because the leadership of our country today is being seen as a puppet of imperialists and globalists. If we're a laughing stock, <laughs> is this man going to get this job? No, first of all, he's not even qualified. <laughs> what do you mean? If there's anyone who is qualified, it's Baba. No, no, have you checked the qualifications to be the chairperson of the African? Union Commission. First, we must have a master's degree. He doesn't have? <laughs> so it's an exercise in futility. The last, the last time, Do, I don't know whether you have read Miguna Miguna's Peeling Back the Mask. Uh, yes. <laughs> You've read the book. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Uh, he said that Raila, you know, stoned his teacher in uh, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> and that had to take off. <laughs> so, academic so, qualification. Academic qualification. Yes. Basic, By the way, basics. This is not about patriotism because people have said, oh, why are you not? I mean, I've, 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 I've received a lot of insults in the last couple of days mm -hmm. since I, I did a show with the Trevor Mbija. Great. I've been insulted a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially by my brothers from the leg side. <laughs> but the truth for the matter is, yes. you know, me, I want to save Baba's image. And that's why I'm saying, don't push him. Because William Ruto's uh, philosophy, or lack of it, is that let's remove Baba out of the political picture mm -hmm. so that then me, I can, do my, I can do my things the way I want to do it. Yeah. But they are lying to him. Because academically, the Djibouti candidate is more qualified than, than Jacom. And languages too. Yes. And secondly, if you analyze the geopolitical geopolitics, you have the, uh, the Islamic, mm -hmm. the Islam, Arab world, yes. you know, the Francophone. Yes, Francophone. You know, yeah. Anglophone. Anglophone. And Lusophone. Exactly. And then, even the image of our president globally and continentally, is actually going to work against Baba. What if he gets it? <laughs> what will you say? I don't know. It will take a miracle. <laughs> and miracles still do happen. You know that. 
Miracles can happen. The last, the last miracle I remember was performed by Jesus Christ. And even then, I just read them on the Bible. I don't know whether it's... <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was wrong? That was, so, 2000, so I don't know. That was 2,000 years ago. Yes. I, I, I know, for example, that... Uh, is it or whoever this guy? <laughs> Prophet. <laughs> Prophet Uwari. <laughs> His miracles are only about disabled people, but I don't know why he never... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he never performs a miracle to the blind. <laughs> so, was it wrong for uh, Riley to 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 join government? Oh, it's a big mistake. First of all, it is a a lie. It's a it's what we, I think I call the big con. You claim you are opposition, mm. meaning therefore, you know, you must check on the excesses of government. Now, when you join government. What are you telling your constituency? What are you telling the people who have supported you tirelessly? Hmm? I mean, the truth be told, Raila has psychophantic following. Hmm? I mean, they can even lynch you. I hope uh, they are not uh, hanging <laughs> <Wait> around. <laughs> 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 but, but that's the truth. But now when you join government, so you have actually compromised the whole governance structure. Because now you're not, no longer able to check on the government. And that's why parliament today in Kenya is an appendage, an extension of the executive. It's a rubber stamp. I, I don't even think. I think rubber stamp is even more genuine. But I think this one, I don't know what it is. But uh, <laughs> and So which way are we, out? Yeah, are we in which trouble way there? out yeah, what's as the a country? Yeah. Oh, there is hope in the country by the way. And, With uh, what? And, a third way? With third way, with Gen Z movement, it's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 building up. The conversations are shaping up very well, especially if you if you I don't know if you participate in many of the spaces that's happening. Mm. We no longer need political rallies actually. Mm. We just need to organize a space, and 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 Kenyans are. I I participate in many of them, and I listen in. Um, the the conversations are fantastic. People are really people are really discussing issues, and one of the things that I will tell the Gen Zs is that yes remain tribeless formless or whatever the case may be but this idea that you want to be leaderless doesn't work mm -hmm. because so long as you're not going into the space of these individuals that we are we are against then they are happy see the, the, the because so long as you remain le leaderless uh, the rutos the railers and, and and the rest the people now in government eh, won't be bothered you know, they'll just say, ah, watch our picket to Makelele or social media, you know, or Facebook, mm -hmm. whatever. But the moment you, you, you show interest in, in taking over power, because you have to take over power. If today, for example, uh, Ruto is not there, or Gashagwa, uh, okay, Wetangula we look, can only organize in terms of the pecking orders. Mm -hmm. You can only organize an election within 60 days. Mm -hmm. But imagine today if uh, Ruto or Gashagwa is not there. So who takes over the country? So that's my challenge to the Gen Zs. You, you honestly have to think about a leadership. You have to have a leadership. Join a party or form your own party, whichever the case may be. But you must take over. Because the only re the reason that you went to the streets is because of bad leadership. So the intent should be you want to replace that leadership. So what is Ikuru Alcott's motive? What, is you, what do you want in this equation? What is your role? <clears throat> Jeff, you know... You, 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 and you and I know each other for quite some time right now, mm. uh, and you know exactly what I believe in. May I believe in a in a better Kenya, and and I think for me one of the biggest problems we have in this country is that we have got terrible leadership. I, I, you, you and I, we all travel the world. We've seen uh, what obtains in other countries. Honestly, I do not believe that Kenya should be described as a third developing country. It shouldn't be. We are very rich. Just before I came to your show here, I met somebody in the tourism sector, mm. and he was saying that the $260 per day within 24 hours to just go into the Mara is a deterrence to tourism. Our neighbors, they just came back from South Africa, they, they already, I think, received about 9 million tourists. What? Yeah, 9 million tourists. We have not even reached that figure. So... I want Kenya is a country with plenty of opportunities. 
we, we, we can equalize this country so easily. I mean, when we did the constitution in 2010, so one of the things that we really thought is that, uh, I mean, for me coming from Trukana, for the longest time we used to speak about being marginalized, so we are minorities, you know, uh, and, and Moya at that time used to say, Kama uko kwa kanu, uko kwa chama, auto wana nini? Maendeleo. Mm -hmm. that, Moya used to say that openly. Yeah, yeah. But when we were doing the constitution, we said, you know, Kenya belongs to all of us in equal measure. So we must equalize the country. That's how we agreed on the idea of 47 counties, counties. As, as, a, as a means of sending resources so that then you as a Turkana cannot now claim anymore that you are being marginalized, you are being underdeveloped. Mm. Okay? Mm. But so is the, the kind of theft that is happening in, in, in those counties, you know, we should actually have a special jail. And, and I think as people in Turkana, mm. we have so much land we, we should actually have a special jail and then make sure that it's transparent. It's, it's, the the walls are glass so that then you can have visits. <laughs> to, to, the, way, the way we go to a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> to look at like a super max <laughs> for all ex-governors. Exactly. But Dr. Ari, that's, and, and, that's and where see, we, we devolved corruption. That's the thing. Right? No, you we see, were supposed to devolve development, but we devolved corruption. corruption. So, Jeff and Igunza, let me tell you one, one thing I want us to change. Eh? In your, uh, in your Kikui mother tongue, hmm? yeah. your Lunje. Yes. Yeah. What is the word? What is corruption? Kuya. <laughs> That's tagari. Theft. That's theft. Muivi. Muishi. Muishi. Yes. So when you say Muishi, you can actually relate to it. So what I want us to change is this lingua. Yeah. Let's stop talking about corruption because it's, it's alien to our even our, our own yeah. existential locations culturally. Yeah. Mm. We need to call it theft of public money. Mm. And that way we can nail thieves of public money. If today you read the Auditor General report, people are just thieves from, from I don't know, yeah. the Out highest office yeah. to everywhere. Outright. They are just stealing. Yeah? Yeah. And, 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 and you see, what, what the, the globalists have done, they have sold to us this narrative that let's call it corruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They even came up with the anti-corruption convention. Right. You know? But if you look at our penal laws, <clears throat> our penal code, if you are a thief, if you say that I've built us, I'm going to build a school, yeah? yeah, and we cannot see that school, but money had been allocated to that school, mm. what have you done with the money? So you have stolen. Eaten. Yeah? So we kula your pesa. Umekula. Yeah. So, under, under our current law, we don't need an anti-corruption act. We just need to enforce it under, under, under the normal law that we charge you with theft. And honestly speaking, I work a lot with accountants. And um, they have told me when they audit, because you know, see, auditing takes about six months okay. before they file a report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they normally will give you what they call a management letter. That uh, we have these queries, so they raise audit queries, and they ask you to respond to it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't respond to it, then they do the final report, the audit report that now confirms there was a cabridia. The money was allocated. That money is not there. And they tell me, if you were to put me on the stand and you're giving evidence in chief, it will not take me even 10 minutes to prove that money was stolen. And that's why when we came up with Punguza Mizigo in 2019, we put in timelines for prosecution of thieves of public money. Even for DPP, you know, for ESCC and all that. We say, we say that, but, uh, you know. Because you see, the third sad thing is that yeah. the thieves are known. They're walking the streets. Yeah, and cases are there to be proven, some having been proven. Me, but nothing happens. To highlight to you. I don't know if you're going to talk about Kakamega, but I don't know. Vihiga, Kwetu. Vihiga, eh? Yeah. Like in your neighbor in Kakamega yes. is now a minister. But there was a case with the a case with the ACC. Yeah, and he walked away. And and you know, Jeff, eh, I think maybe going forward, you guys, I just let me give you some guys some bit of advice. Eh? 
We need to start interrogating the soul of our nation. Mm. What really is our conscience as a people, as a country? Why would somebody say the kind of things they say, for example, about the current president, and then when they are appointed into leadership, they are okay with it? The psychophancy. The psychophancy. So that really, it, it's a, it, it, for me, it's an interrogation on what is the heart and soul of the Kenyan nation. How are we being described, how are we being seen out there? See, like the way now you could say, hey, Tanzanians, they have got, they have got some level of unity, mm-hmm. but in Kenya, tribalism, that becomes our character uh, definition. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, part of, I mean, one of the things that I mean, uh, uh, un- unfortunately, I would say this, is that uh, one of my favorite presidents right now in the world is uh, uh, Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the young man. Uh, Imagine. Uh, he even refused to be to be promoted. Yes. He said I'll remain a captain, I'll keep on my salary. So in Kenya today, why how much money do you actually need, especially in public spaces? You know, I, 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 I don't get it. So it speaks about us as a people. Who who are Kenyans? And I, this is something we need to interrogate honestly, mm-hmm. more closely, when we make decisions. You know, because Kenyans go into election with a tribal mind, a regional mind, and all that, and then the next thing, they are complaining. A mutuetu narrative. Mut, mutuetu narrative. And yet the mutuetu does not share the, the, the salary or, or even the proceeds of, of theft. With them. With them. You know, mm-hmm. so there is something psychic about the Kenyan society. I think we need to be psychoanalyzed as a, as a, as a, <laughs> as a, as a nation. <laughs> as a people, right? We need help. <laughs> so is there an opposition, Dr. Ari? Is there any form of opposition out there? At the moment, the only form of opposition is actually the people of Kenya. Mm. Because they are questioning government. You know? But in parliament, we don't have an opposition. It's no. dead. It's, it's completely been bought, uh, sold. Atuna uh, Bunge, to be honest, as we speak. In fact, they have killed the only other uh, one, uh, one of the one of the um, um, arms of government. So the only opposition right now in Kenya Kenya, the Gen Zs, the people, the way they have come out to say we don't like the way government is is, is doing its business, mm. you know. So that's the only opposition we have right now, you know. No, no, no. And I think for me, it's the genuine opposition because it is inviting us to relook at Article One of the Constitution of Kenya that talks about sovereign power and authority vesting in the people mm. to exercise it directly or indirectly through their elected representatives. With the people. N- now, the elected the repre- people. now the elected representatives have actually failed us. So we need to look at that article to look at that article and say, okay, how then do we amend it in such a way that the people can now have direct power and they can fire? Because government of the day, whether you are a president or whatever, whoever you are, you are an employee of the people. Mm. It's the people who put you there. They gave you that job, you know. So if you are not performing, tunakufuta kazi. Today, you if, if your staffer steals from you, what, what will you do? Out. Out. Out nature. So the same philosophy must uh, must apply yeah. in governance. The complacency of the middle class. Yeah. For the last three, ele- two or three elections, mm. they stay home or they say, ah, nisawa to you know what is gender lay. Have they woken up now? Has the middle class woken up because of what's happened the last two months? I think the middle class is the, the, the biggest letdown for this country. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, let me take you back to uh, the COVID, uh, you know, the height of COVID. It was the middle class that actually suffered the most than even the guy in the village. Mm-hmm. Because you had mortgages, you had fees to pay, you have this and that and that. And then, of course, there was no, you're not able to generate revenue. You know? No. We, in fact, we even stopped uh, running big offices anymore because then we, we don't need them. Now we are going virtual on almost everything. But the middle class keeps on complaining about how bad governance is affecting them. But they do nothing about it. When I, when I ran for president in 2017, just to remind you because you have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so the people who criticized me the most mm. actually were my, my colleagues and friends. <clears throat> and they asked me, hey, Kuru, are you crazy? I said, why? Do you want to run for president? Yeah. Don't I qualify? 
but but you two rules how many are you it's like i'm not trying to be the president of turkana mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yes i want to be the president of kenya mm. and have you looked at my agenda and then the other thing they ask is but how much money do you have okay. and i told them listen even if i have money i will never use my personal money to seek a public office because that's the beginning of corruption cuz i have to recoup it you have to recoup it absolutely so it's an investment because mm-hmm. now and that's the sadly the situation we have in kenya today where actually politics has been commercialized i mean jeff some of the fellows now who are flying jean choppers or whatever what did they do what industry are they running they're not like an elon musk mm. or mark zuckerberg or bill gates or whatever but all of a sudden there are three four helicopters yeah exactly and they and they used to live in village like uh, estates mm. in, in nairobi mm. but all of a sudden it's you and it's runda so you um karen yeah so it's not like dynastic like you <laughs> <laughs> if Jeff told me listen yeah. Karen yeah. I, I can appreciate because I can look at the Koinange line and see 2027 mm-hmm. in Akaje from now 2027 is an opportunity to transition into new leadership the the biggest challenge is how organized and mobilized are we as a society as a people okay and especially this is the challenge i throw back to the gen z and i hope they are listening to this show mm. you need to mobilize yourself because uh, the current leadership we have in kenya is an opportunity to actually transition into new leadership and i think people should not really be afraid of offering them so see one of the biggest challenges uh, jeff gunza we have yeah. in this country is that people don't want to offer themselves for leadership yeah. and when you don't offer yourself the refrafs the non descript individuals mm-hmm. will, will, will be will be our leaders can you imagine today the face of leadership in kenya equally some some fellows who is so difficult even to trace where they came from <laughs> but they are the face of kenya yeah hmm? and why because we are not offering ourselves we are saying oh li- politics is 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 a dirty game well then the dirty people will actually get into it yeah. and that's exactly what what is happening in in our country today. And so either we offer ourselves or we should stop complaining about how we are being governed. Is mm? Dr. Ikuru Okot is he going to be on the ballot in 27? Absolutely. You're there? Yes. You're you know you know they stopped me in 2022 because uh, they they did not want me to bring back the Punguza because that was going to be our campaign. Mm. Uh, Punguza Mizigo. Okay. Kenya reduce the cost of governance and change the way things are, are being run in this country. As a matter of fact, I was even going to propose that we abolish all the 47 counties of Kenya. Mm. That's what Eric Omondi is also talking about. No, he is talking about reducing to 8. I don't think we need original 8. Mm. For me, I will push for use of the 1450 wards as units of accelerating development and taking services to the people's doorstep. Yeah. That's what I will do. No counties. Jeff in the in the in the developed world who cares sometimes about who your mp is it's about the local authority am i getting services is transport on time is my garbage being collected and all those kind of things. those are the services so we take services to people's very doorstep so for me i will even uh, i will support the retention of the 1450 wards allocate money to those wards you know and in the future as population grows we even increase them for purposes of service delivery period i, I don't think we need 47 can because kenya is overrepresented mm-hmm. and and you know when we did our when we did our research on pumuza mizigo we just picked about three comparisons the united states of america 350 million people with 535 representatives for both houses mm-hmm. congress and you know senate, senate yeah. uh, india at that time i think so about 1.3 billion people Uh, only 800 representatives for both houses china uh, where we borrow a lot of money and we run to whatever we're still there or, or still 1.1.3 uh, billion yeah. plus people at that time 1200 now you come to kenya that time a population of about 50 million people mm. 
with 416 elected representatives, including, I don't know, nominations, whatever. And that's why we said, you know, we need to abolish all those people. And they were gobbling 37.5 billion at that time from the taxpayers' money. And our proposal was reduce it to at least 5 billion. And we make Parliament of Kenya today only 100 representatives. Then we can even watch them. Because today, Parliament in Kenya is Soko Jinga. You don't even know who is. <laughs> and that's why we have Article 255, 256, and 257, which allows people to be able to say, okay, now let's look at this constitution. 14 years thereafter, what can we change? Now, it's clear, do we need women representatives or, uh, or, or uh, nominate, nominated positions? Mm. Uh, do we need deputy governors? No. They are, they are gobbling our money. Today, the county government of Wasingishu has not uh, fallen because John Bararot resigned as a deputy governor. True or false? True. So, so now we need to relook at our, our governance structure and say, okay, do we need all these places? We don't need. Uh, lots of uh, civic mm. education. Na, 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 Mm. Yeah. So it's a, with the people. Yeah, yeah. With their people. And that's why now even at call one, it's a critical uh, discussion you must Correct. have. Correct. When can we exercise this power directly?